Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 153. Today is January 15th, 2024. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my ravenous co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Um, no, hello, no. hello. Ravenous, not necessarily because of what we've read, but what, how, what we're going to discuss and what we await. Before we get started, we do want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means that if there is something in the Cosmere you haven't read and you're worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. This is very true tonight because we are discussing something that has not yet been published. Brandon read an interlude from the upcoming Stormlight number 5, Wind and Truth, at Dragonsteel 2023, which we are going to be diving into tonight. Yes, I realize at the end of our last episode, we announced that we'd be discussing the story of Misham, but afterwards we realized we really needed to get a conversation about this interlude out because my gosh, what a meaty, meaty piece of writing Brandon read at Dragonsteel this year. And we love meat. Yes. And yeah, and if and if you saw my social media posts where I did mention Misham, yeah, that was because I forgot to check the notes. So yeah, that's <laughs> no for later. For those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube after the fact, we do want to remind you that it's possible for listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. We record episodes every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, so please join us and take an active part of the discussion. The Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two per episode really helps us out as we continue to work to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. We've got some great people. We've got some great conversations going on over there. Awesome community. And uh, you'll also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. Ah, it doesn't feel like it's been two weeks since our last episode. Like It, it feels like we just recorded that. I know. It's crazy. It does for me, but that was because I was sick all last week and it just yeah, dragged on. That's true. It was a blur. Uh, I have mm. family in town, so, um, and I also have uh, recently become a Grunkle. I am very excited about this. Grunkle. I am now Grunkle Bill. Grunkle, Grunkle as in great uncle. So my my niece had a baby, so good times. You going to open up a mystery shack? Not yet. I'm not old enough for that yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm. If you know, you know. Yep. Yep. I also have smoked. Uh, 1993 Warbirds in chat says Bill's smoking meets ability is top notch. I have uh, been smoking quite a bit. I did a tri tip yesterday. I did ribs a few days before that. I did pulled pork before that. And I'm thinking tomorrow, or the next day, I may go buy a uh, pork belly and cure it and then smoke it and make some homemade bacon. Okay. So. I'm excited. It's going to be good. Uh, I just made fish tacos. That's all. Ooh, I, did. I love fish tacos. Mm-hmm. Mahi mahi. Those are good. And a mahi Those mahi to you, too. <laughs> uh, well, any other fun stuff going on before we move on? No? I like Jordan's my haircut. I, I got it before Christmas. That's right. Like, you right uh, Christmas. Yeah, you but, donated a bunch, didn't you? Yeah, eight inches, which is. Usually not as much as you would want to donate. Like that's like the bare, bare minimum. But if you do it for like a kid's wig, then you can mm-hmm. do that. So that's what I did. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't wait. I'm too frustrated with my hair. I need to chop it off. So yeah, I finally well, got cool. it sent in. Yep. Still violent, well, so. it looks very nice. Thank you. I really like it. It's got more wave and body to it. So it's, it's good. I, I know what those words mean in other contexts, but 
No, I, I think I get it. What she means is her hair propagates through a medium, like most waves. <laughs> so moving on to announcements, <laughs> Jordan, uh, I think you had a couple of, for us. The first one was about our thumbnail. Yes, yes. Uh, so our thumbnail is given to us by Jordi Rapture. He made this beautiful art of Kusakesh. And you can go check out his Instagram account. It's Jordi Rapture underscore art. So thanks to Jordy for taking care of that for us. Yeah, that or was not taking care of that, but like letting us use it, I guess, is the better. Yeah, that was like that. That that wasn't we didn't commission that. If we just were given permission no. to use no, it. No, actually the image. 17 Shard commissioned it, I found out. Yeah. So thank you, so. 17 Shard, for that. Yes. Um, and then also, how's the push to 3000 going? Not well. Oh dear. Mm. So we're not running into a problem. Uh, the we're, we we raised again in we're up to nine oh eight on followers, which is good. We need more followers. We want to get to a thousand. We're getting close. Yeah. The problem is we're now running into when we started our push last year, and people were all gung ho. And it's a you have to get over uh, ten thousand hours within a three hundred fifty six three sixty five day period, and. Oh. Uh, so we're now running into our own tail, essentially. So we're moving backwards. Yeah. Well, so basically, we have to run faster because we're now on the part where the treadmill is uh, pushing back. Mm-hmm. So I I actually just completed our entire uh, podcast that I've been slowly running in okay. our uh, in my bathroom uh, using a second phone that I have. But um, you're making us look great to our audience. Jordan. I am. <laughs> it's great. No, it's wonderful. There's always a low level uh, six oh, going gosh. on in my bathroom. But the uh, so, you know, maybe you should do that too, Chad. <laughs> it's not creepy at all. Wow. OK, so we'll. But not in all honesty, um, I was thinking we might need to maybe put out a little bit more content as well, just to get the view numbers up. So um, we're not just doing. Uh, yeah, just the podcast. Cause a mm-hmm. lot of people don't even listen to the podcast uh, over on YouTube. Right, if you are someone who could, we'd appreciate it. But more importantly, uh, what I'm thinking is it might be fun to do like uh, maybe just short little things where we grab a single Rafo and just tackle it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, or just... or even pull over some of the TikTok stuff that doesn't use sounds. Mm-hmm. That might not be bad, too. Cool. What do you mean doesn't use sound? I never used to. Well, so so TikTok has a thing where they have these sounds that like someone has made the sound and then a bunch of people lip sync it or or whatever uh-huh. else or act to it. Okay. And those ones I would worry about doing on YouTube because there may be copyright issues right, versus right. if you're just using it on TikTok, it's fine because it's within their program. But there are some videos I've made that do not involve any of those sounds. So we can okay. pull those over. So you, okay. in other words, that don't involve using potentially copywritten got it. whatever got it. sounds so there's i have I'll, I'll see if i can go through some of my the stuff i've done and find ones that do not have sounds that are potentially iffy for youtube yeah there's cool. got to be a way to port mm-hmm. them too so oh yeah i mean the, i download them to my phone so i could do that pretty easy okay so, cool anyway anyway so if you oh, guys cool. could just at the very minimum if you aren't following us on youtube give us a follow and listen to the podcast there we'd appreciate it Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Well, after that, let's move on into the Cause Me a Thing of the Week. Amy, why don't you introduce this one? Because this is one that you submitted. <laughs> well, yeah. So um, one of Josh's childhood friends, his his son actually listens to the podcast. So hi, Jonathan. Oh, hi. Um, and so he he had this shirt and he designed it. And then he had somebody, I don't know if he sent it out to a shop or something like that, but he had it made. And so... And it says everything is bigger in Roshar, and it just looks really professional and really good. So it looks really yeah, cool. like you could totally sell me that this was a shirt that they were uh, <laughs> made by Dragonsteel. Well, because like yeah. all of the uh, all the people are taller, and every yeah, everything really is bigger. Oh, yeah. in Roshar. Everything is bigger. So it's, it's got it's got lower gravity. So mm-hmm. so it's just really cool. And and his dad actually sent it, and it was like, oh, this would be really great for a Cosmo thing of the week because if he did C C T T W and Josh is like I don't know what that means and I'm like I know what that means we're good so so the, thank you the Katatwa really cool. mm-hmm. 
it's, it's it has the women's kind of script thing. next to to on so i'm assuming I that means that. i think it is all the words or part of it or something i'm mm-hmm. really bad at translating that so i'm a bad rosharn woman scantily clad hands and everything yeah so tut tut it looks like rain you're practically irioli <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Wow. All right. Well, moving on to Sanderson news. There's not much this week because Brandon is out and about traveling and doing all of his explorational things, but he did put out an updated beginner's guide on his channel where he recommends potential starting points for newcomers to the Cosmere. It's like, where do you want to start? Well, not even necessarily to the Cosmere because one of the recommendations he gave was Skyward. Hmm. So, but just sort of book suggestions for people to introduce them. Now I understand um, like one of the things he suggests is Tress as a starter point. I kind of get that, but I wouldn't necessarily use that as an intro myself just because it's such a different style from most of his writing. Mm. That that's just my thought. What do y'all think? For doing Skyward? Oh no, no, no. For Tress. For Tress. I think if you do it with the understanding that it's going to be very different, it could be okay. Yeah. I think the bigger thing is you want to get them to trust Brandon from the start. Uh And so Mm -hmm. like you, you started me on Mistborn because you knew that would have what would get me. What you liked. Yeah. Uh, And so I think if someone is more used to say romanticy style stuff, I think Tress is a great way to start because it gets them to to start trusting him. See, and I would give them Yumi in that instance. See, and I I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word romanticy. (laughs) Uh, The only reason, the only reason I used it is because Brandon used it. He used it. Okay. I guess. Yeah. It's usually it was a little bit someone more, um, someone was asked when I hear yeah. it talked about. So well, so the reason Brandon wrote uh, was referencing it was because someone was asking Yumi. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. so were you looking at all this AI art stuff? And he's like, actually, when when I was writing this book, that wasn't as big a, a thing that was going on. And mm-hmm. I just happened to serendipitously type, type mm-hmm. you know, time it. And it's like sort of the same with uh, Tress. I, I hit on this romanticy trend that happened at the same time. Mm. Mm. I was like, oh, I like that word. I like portmanteaus. They're fun. Yeah, I think it... <sighs> It's probably okay, but usually when people are talking about it, it's a little more, it's more the quote unquote spicy books is how mm. I hear it referred to at least, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. They, no one was covering their safe hands that entire story. Pretty <laughs> steamy if you ask me. <laughs> Just, I mean, yeah. Oh, boy. Well, uh, should we move on into the, the juicy bits? sure i'm excited guys this was such a good interlude (laughs) so um yeah again for just for some context each year or at at a lot of events brandon will do a reading of something that he's written and right now what he has been writing this entire year most most of the year that isn't published is stormlight five which is now being called wind and truth not Knights of Wind and Truth, as many of us suspected, or or as had been uh, even, what's the word, uh, floated as a possibility. It's just going to be Wind and Truth, because mm-hmm. you can't have an actual Kenic, because that would be sacrilegious. And so we get an almost Kenic, which I kind of kind of love, actually. <laughs> um, But yeah, so... Uh, this is what Brandon did at Dragonsteel 2023 during the closing ceremonies, during his final conversation after the talk of the, of the Dragonsteel castle chalet, Brando <laughs> Sando Lando, what people are calling it. And I hate that I said that, but uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, no, I'm a Brando Sando Lando Fando. Ta-da! Get out. I actually made a sticker that says that says Brando Sando Fando. Jordan, this is your official e- eviction notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. You crossed a line. <laughs> He's looking for a place. To He's uh, a Mando of his work. <laughs> <coughs> but um, but yeah, the thing that I like is this kind of takes three 
different previous interludes and mashes them up together so that we get a little bit of closure on certain (laughs) aspects and a lot more open questions. So the first one is the, um, the pure Lake intro or interlude starring grump and blunt and. Oh, what's the third one's name? Thinker. Thinker. Yeah. AKA um, Bayon, Galadon and Demo. Mm-hmm. And I love that it turns out Thinker just couldn't, didn't have a working translator. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're thinking so much. Yeah. So the, these were the wandering people who met with Ishik, uh, Ishi, Ishik, Ishik in the, Ishik, uh, yeah. yeah, Ishik in the Pure Lake. Mm-hmm. And we've, and we, we've had it confirmed in words of Brandon several times that these three were Bayon from White Sand Demo from Mistborn and Galadon from Elantris, but we finally actually have it in book in the book confirmed who these individuals are. You know, they're wandering around looking for Hoyd, trying to figure out where this guy's gone. Then we com- have the interlude where Kusikesh, Kusikesh. I-, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Uh, yeah, I can't say the name. <laughs> uh, in the audiobook, it was Kusikesh. Kusakesh. Okay. okay. But, you know, because it's, it's all C's. And so <laughs> they, all, they also say Sidious. So fair enough. Hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so where he pops up and just shows up at the same time every day, we have that mixed in. And then of course there's Eam, the, the poor cobbler who was okay. executed by nail. And Eam spelled YM, I think, right? Mm, e- YM. Yeah. Yep. Eam. Yeah. Um, so these are all three very, very interesting interludes. And so we kind of have them all slammed together and in spectacular fashion. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So we start off with a new character that we've never met before named Diel. I was, Um, I thought it was Diel. No, Brandon, Brandon pronounced it Diel. Mm. And so I I don't know. Yeah, if if you if you listen to the audio thing, and if you go to uh, the Arcanum W O B dot Coppermind dot net, um, in the Dragonsteel twenty twenty three section, it's that it's far farther down the page, but you can find it and read this. Or yeah. there's a, a button you can click that'll have Brandon's audio reading it as well. Mm. And I believe he pronounced it Dial. Um, but yeah, so we have this. Girl, and it quickly becomes apparent that she is related to Eam. She's the granddaughter of Eam. Yeah. Um, and I just I like the way it's introduced because this is clearly a little while after um, Eam has been executed, and you see mm-hmm. sort of the ways that the the shop has been adjusted um, because you know he's no longer there, and so they're using it as sort of a, a kitchen. A, a, it's like, like a almost little a waste cafe, stop. almost. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, our uh, our wonderful trio just sort of step in, and things get a little exciting immediately because, uh, is it uh, Demo who who goes up and asks about the uh, the floating lights? Well, she. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it, it might for- be Demo, but she goes up to them because she they want more yeah. tea. Right. Right. Well, and, but, and she's been covertly listening to them the entire time. Oh, She'd yeah. be a very good spy. Yeah. Yep. But she, you know, it's funny because he turns and just kind of innocently asks about these floating lights and she immediately panics. Yep. Which makes perfect sense why she'd panic. I, it's what got her grandfather killed. Exactly. I, I love love how Brandon read it too, and it's like this huge long run in sentences. I'm sorry I have to go. I mm. forgot my mother wanted me to check on the business. Stay as long as you want. Thank you for the tip. We're closed now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> And he read it really fast too, and I was yep. like, "That is such a little kid panicking I'm, moment." I'm, of like, I'm looking forward to hearing Kate Redding's interpretation of that. <laughs> but, so. uh, but yeah, well, I mean, it, again, because we remember the scene with with Eam, because mm-hmm. um, uh, Nail basically came looking for him, basically looking for excuses to snuff out Radiance. Yep. Yep. Um, and he had done some things in his past, clearly that he had repented of, but Nail is not a forgiving herald. Well, no. More important, it, it, even if he were, uh-huh. it was he wanted an excuse to kill him. Exactly. Well, so that, it didn't matter. Right. 
Yeah, he thought he was going to save the world by killing them. By preventing the yeah, the radius because, from returning. Mm-hmm. Well, because he knew he had gone insane, just like the rest of them, but mm-hmm. they were all under the, the impression that Ishar... Now, nah, Ishar's got it together. Oh. And, and so they went with Ishar's plan, and you're just like, really? That's... That's unreliable who you, you, narrator there. The you think, of Dr. you think he's Moreau. got it together, huh? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh yeah. but yeah, so I, I, I'm glad that we've revisited these people. You know, the, yeah. the family of Eam, because Eam was mm-hmm. like he only showed up in that single little um, snippet, yeah. That single interlude, but he was such a good character. Well, yeah. Br- Brandon uses these interludes like strategically. They're mm-hmm. they're always there to either foreshadow something else or to just give us a piece of what's going on. Um, I remember the Herdazian general. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he introduces us there and then we see him again come up oh, in Oath right, yeah. Ring. The mink. And then and uh, lift. mink, that's what it is. Yeah, lift. And so I Z- thought Zeth origi- was interludes originally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I thought this was going to be I thought the reason for this was to foreshadow what was going on so that when you read Edge Dancer mm-hmm. you would understand okay this is what uh nails up to. Well and, and it and it was. Yeah. To purpose. Yeah. But yeah, it turns out no, there's multiple, which mm-hmm. makes me excited for some of the other interludes where we still have no stinking clue what like the, the crap the guy get in the wood like I'm yeah like, what is going on with is you the com- they'll out. come with lights in their pockets don't know what's going and on there Axie's the yeah. collector yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then the multiple risen uh chapters we got mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it- well and and a lot of that has come to fruition in don shard but there's definitely more uh, yeah, yeah. Because Cheery Cheery is awesome. Yeah, and that we, led to we, a Cheery Cheery interlude, <laughs> which no one guessed on the title belt, let me tell you. <laughs> Who did not see that one coming? I knew it was going to happen. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> you held out on us, Bill. How could you? But no, I didn't want to spoil it for you. No, Sorry. but I, I love how he uses the interludes, as, one, just a change of pace to mm-hmm. give us a little bit of world building, but also just to give it like, okay. You know, you. I want you to know this, but I can't. I can't do it any other way other than. And now for something completely different. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. I put enough of them together, it's fine. It's little tidbits for your like. Well, the thing that I find so interesting about the interludes is, especially when you see people who are new to the Stormlight Archive, often they complain about them. They'll be like, and "What is going on? Just get me," yeah. or they'll skip them, and that just. That it's blows like, my mind. Ah! That absolutely blows my mind. I'm just like, why? Why? There's there, there's something here. Rather I mean, than could, skipping it, try and figure out why is this here. I can understand put this it, very specifically for a reason. Yeah, I've only I, done that in a book one time. What was it, Amy? Oh, I I was just gonna say like I can understand like if it just ends like right before the interview, it's like this big stressful moment. And you're like, oh uh-huh. my goodness, but I need that. I can understand like taking a step away and being like, okay, I can breathe, I can calm. Then I can come back and read the interviews, and then I can get ready. Cause, but I don't think there are too many terrible cliffhangers right before the interludes, but it's been a bit, so that's possible that I'm wrong about that. Um, but I I liked how they introduced um the eerie, you know, way that the way that the eerie Eeriali were looking at the Oh goodness, my pressure. The religion. Me. Well, the religion, too, is interesting because you haven't heard about as much with it. Like, this is where I feel like we've gotten the most information about it. Um, but I did just kind of like, it took me a second for being like, who are these, the owners? And then I was like, the patterns, oh, that's yeah. who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a ominous term for them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, apparently there is uh, not a consensus about whether they're a part of the one, as it were. Mm-hmm. Which I could see if people are being abused or other things that you're going to well, ha- be less likely to well, think of them fondly and think. And they're it. just clearly not human is the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or well, even full like, because like the Iriali are, there, there's obviously something slightly different about them, mm-hmm. but they appear they have golden human. hair, golden uh, skin, yeah. skin. Well, have you heard the new theory that has come out about them since uh, the secret project? So um, go to Yumi and the night painter. What are the two colors? 
the magenta and, and cyan. Yeah, cyan and magenta. Yeah. In any, uh, when you do that, there's a third color, and someone asked Brandon about it, and he's like, if there were, there'd be yellow. Yellow. And there, it has caused some people to wonder the when, because we've been assuming the one was at Anulsium when it comes to the Iriali religion. Some people are now thinking virtuosity might be the one that it splintered itself to, because okay. we know virtuosity did splinter itself mm -hmm. in order, now why, we don't know, but. And then if you think of it as the Heon lines are the cyan, the magenta, and the Iriali as the, the yellow. Third. Well, ex mm. and there's usually black involved in that as well. Yeah. But, CYMB. Yeah. But, and so it was just one of those things that, uh, that's interesting. People, yeah. People are putting out there as a theory and I kind of, I kind of like it because it also, it sounds to me like a, a total virtuosity thing to do. Mm -hmm. You want to experience everything. Okay. And so it would, it, it would turn the Irialdi into uh, almost a cognitive being. Cause that would be, be a, they'd be splinters. But yeah, it almost makes things of like the Nalfians, how they have just th their breaths and stuff. Yeah. Maybe something well, like that. Well, or like, or like Spren, they're splinters of a God. Yeah. But I, Spren feel like they're, different than i feel like the iriali would be in that comparison that yeah Spr well spren are um investiture that gain cognizance while the iriali are like people who yeah became yeah Gained. you like, know it'd be there, almost there's, like there's i think different. the returned would be the uh oh maybe the best thing yeah, returned not, is a not good... nowhere near as invested as a returned mm -hmm. yeah but they'd be splinters of the the divine essentially Hmm. And it was one of those things I had not considered it. And people started theorizing on that. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Didn't even <sighs> think about that. I'm trying to think. Yeah. See, the, the only theory that I, I had is just eerie is close to Irie, but they're oh. silver rather than gold. So. Yep. But I, yeah, yep. I don't, I don't, I don't I, know that that has any sort of any legs. That's just yeah. the first thing that came to my mind. I, I feel a little sad that I didn't remember as much about the fact, like their journeys between places. Like, and I remember in Tress, they mm. mentioned that there was an Iriali cup or inscription on a cup that um, yeah. Charlie has and stuff. And so like, I was like, I remember going, Oh, that's right. The Eerie you're traveling around or there's inferences to them doing that. Mm -hmm. But this is the first very blatant in your face. Yep. Reference to it. Well, and I would guess that they're probably heading to Scadriel at this point. Oh, I, the more popular theory right now is Lumar because we do know that we, we, at the very minimum, we know they do go to Lumar. Right. But we also know they go to Scadriel. How do we know they go to Scadriel? It was, it was in the broadsheets. They talked <gasps> about the, 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 this, this sect of people off of, oh, of yellow haired people. Right. Off. It's, it's, and so I would really say that they go to, snippet. and I would say that they're going to Scadriel first because, um, because, uh, Tress is clearly farther in the future than. Um, I have to go back and look two. at that one. I'm, I'm forgot that one. Yeah, there was yeah, a broad. It was, it was just a little, were, little tiny. It, thing. it was a blink and you'll miss it thing, but we mm -hmm. definitely know that they went to Scadriel at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, they they're on Scadriel era during two. Era Two. Yeah, but we just don't see them on screen other than the reference to them. Mm -hmm. And Era Two takes place very Before shortly. Chris. Well, maybe, but but shortly after Book Five. <gasps> oh. So, that's true. so my, my so guess is that's where they're line. going, unless they just were very briefly somewhere else. Oh, yeah, that would, I mean, it would have to be there. I, either that or they're just stopping through there. Who knows? I don't know that they would do that, though, since there's the whole, like, seven Who knows? places they're planning to go, and I don't know that they would mm -hmm. stop over somewhere, because that would throw off. I mean, but if, if, if Skadriel, if they settle there... Boy, they're coming into Skadriel at a very uh, awkward time. Oh, yes. Where people might not be wanting a bunch of uh, refugees that, you know, that yeah. don't look like them out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And it might depend on where they're coming to. Because yeah. I don't know if Southern Skadriel it, would be safer or not. I oh, definitely wouldn't be safer. They're ha the Southern Skadrians aren't happy with outsiders right now. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're having their own issues. Mm -hmm. And Internal it's not like the too. northern Skadrians are, you know, are, are all super happy hunky dory either. No, I mean, 
you know, they just had a, a civil war that almost ended in one of the cities getting nuked. Well, and the thing is, again, if they're going at this point onto Scadrial, they're going to Scadrial before Era 2 happens. And yeah. so all the stuff that happens in Era 2, that's what they're stepping into. That's what they're right there for, yeah. Hmm. But no, it's... But yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff there. But yeah, so what I loved the uh, the confrontation in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where she grabs yeah. the butter knife. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the, well the, and- thing, the thing that's interesting is because the mother comes because all she knows is that there's three people she doesn't recognize in the kitchen with her daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and, so- and, and she comes in wielding a shard blade. Yep. Which means, and, and the shard blade is, um, what's the name? Uh, Uma. Uh, Uma. Uma, yeah. Which means that she's made some oaths, sworn a couple of oaths. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at least, least two. At least. Yep. No. Um, I don't think three, we know. Who, three, I don't think. I don't think. We, I don't think we know what it is for truth watchers. Oh, that's right. Cause it can be different. Mm-hmm. I, I always forget that. But uh, you know, and so she's progressed quite quite a bit as well um, well the, the other but uh, the thing i love about the confrontation is there there's poor uh diel diel yeah diel yeah. diel and you know she's terrified meanwhile they're like i told you to stop phrasing it like that and it's like i told you you looked like nail what just because we're both dark skin i'm dark skin no one confuses me for him <laughs> and it's just them just constantly busting each other's chops and i well, love it well and the thing is we do have visual representations of nail and bayon and they actually do have the same very angular features and they're both tall and tall. they're both very very tall men, yeah um, now, obviously, there is a, a a very distinct scar that's missing from Bayon, but and it isn't nail bald. I think he is. I, th- I don't remember now. Yeah, me neither. I, I you, 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 it's the kind of thing where it's like I knew the answer until you asked me the question. <laughs> but, but what's funny is you know the one that she thought was the you know the least interactive is the one that's the most good at dealing with people. With Galadon, mm-hmm. Galadon, Galadon. What the heck did I do there? Um, and I, I'm, I'm glad to have some more Galadon. He was a fun character who we haven't seen for 20 years. Yeah, I so also like, like Nail crazy is fools. bald. Or, or, wait, sorry, crazy Nail fools, is, yeah. is bald. Yes, okay. and I like that she takes the time to, like, that's an interesting combining mm-hmm. the words into one. <laughs> Like all this chaos, and she pauses for a moment to focus on that. Well, Jordan, you did say we like portmanteaus. We do. So no, and so I don't. I I love the dynamic all three of them have. It, it's one of these things because we've only seen them twice together. But Brandon uses this very limited time to show that these three characters that we know from other stories they clearly have spent time together enough that they have constant complaints about one another, things that annoy each other. The the thing that I only have with familiarity. Yeah. I, yeah, I I do love the dynamic between them, but I also like you were, we were talking about the confrontation where she comes with a shard with a shard blade and all of them immediately go to like weapons drawn, ready to fight. Um, and it's different for each of them how you know because Bayon basically pulls out a gun it sounds like mm-hmm. cylinder um, so it's yeah gun. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it was some sort of firearm and yeah. then um Galadon just basically starts uh Dr. Stranging casting spells and well, he, having the magic gonna, at the ready I was gonna ask about that because he like drops something and it yeah breaks. It was, and like yeah. and it and it's almost it, stormlight it's, but not quite it's it's a it's a ball of the connection juice yeah, it's it, it's oh, the same it's the same okay. sort of thing that uh, that Shy does well, when I she think becomes it, an Elantrian. Well, it also it might yeah it might be the purified door. Yeah, the that yes, because it was all in those containers. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the thing that reminds me of going back to the lost metal, like you were just doing, is the scene where they're infiltrating, and uh, Marisi's asking, "Okay, so what can you guys do?" And Shy explains, "I can." 
I'm going to be stamping the walls and making a door that will appear for a couple seconds. She's like, you can do magic. And Shy is like, what you do is magic. No, that's normal. <laughs> that's what, basically that's you're science. A witch. Yeah. And it's like, but what you're telling me, basically you're a witch. <laughs> you're just going to make a door. Cool. Yeah. I don't know how you're doing it, but okay. I'm going to make a door out of door. <laughs> <laughs> but <sighs> more importantly, <laughs> I just love that. I love how it, it, cause it's the whole thing about, you know, if you're familiar with it, it's science. If you're not, it's magic. And we're getting sort of another, as we're getting Mm. these things to start to, you know, bounce into one another, we're getting that again. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I forget. Did, did Demo go to battle ready as well? Or it was, it just, I'm trying to find it and I keep missing it, but Whoa, the tall one said, leaping backwards. He was the he one that killed the darkness. He pulled something from his belt, something he brandished like a weapon. Uh, strange lights formed around the grumpy one. We knew you'd come back, Mother said. They all stood quietly in the room together. The Shin Man, what the hell is going on? Okay, yeah, so so this Demo doesn't go to battle ready. He's just like, what is happening? It's like, what? Well, it's what, what could Demo do, though? Like, right. Demo was... He's uh, a seer. Yeah. Which last we could tell, all he could burn was adium, and last mm-hmm. we could tell, all the adium is is yeah very yeah. very little, and it's now, in one place. Depending upon uh, lore, because uh, you know Brandon's retconning adium somewhat for reasons that we don't one hundred percent understand, but yeah, he clearly thinks he wrote himself into a corner somewhere, mm. so yeah. he's having to fix stuff. Well, I, I, th- might- I think I think the plan for Brand like the corner that he wrote himself into is that anybody can burn God medals. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so, but it, some people have um, speculated then what these people actually are, are electrum mistings and they could still burn electrum. Hmm. I don't know um, about that. But, like that is, but, even if, but even if he was doing that right then and there, What's he gonna do? There, there'd be zero sign of it in any way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, and it's he cool swallowed as, a vial, and it's like, okay, yeah. So, he did what? Which, but he might always, you know, have some in him. Yeah. Depending, if, well, depending on yeah. what. Yeah, adium. I don't. I, I wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, no, no, not. It's one of the. <laughs> it's a. It's a theory that people are putting out there mm-hmm. of what the implication of this would be. But again, it's uh Well, for, for, honestly, I feel like what more the implication is is Demo is just like, whoa, 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 why are we all? Why do we all have our hackles up? Because again, yeah. he seems more like the uh, the absent-minded scholar type. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's also, I think, he's the type that he he doesn't go to battle first. He takes things down a, exactly. A notch. Well, exactly. The thing that I like that's what Vin does. Hmm. Vin wouldn't go straight to violence, unlike Kelsier. And as she Demo wouldn't was... go early, Vin would have early. Yeah. Vin would have gone straight to defensive posture. Mm-hmm. Yes, and run. But instead, mm-hmm. she went to the guards, which Demo was, mm-hmm. and uh, she would get them to like, "Come on, you don't want to do this." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to. And so I think it's I think it's one of these things where. Wait, Demo, what, do you, do, what, do you, what do you mean Demo was a guard? Or no, he wasn't one of the guards like she converted. I, I just mean yeah. like he was a he, he was, was a soldier. A guard. Yeah. He wasn't but a guard, he was a soldier. It, it, in the second book, he was you know, he was acting as guard. Uh because yeah. he was uh one of the bodyguards for Elland, I believe. Um but yeah, he was a he was trained by Kelsier to fight. And what I like is even though he was a survivorist, um I like that he's more like Vin. Hmm. And so I don't know. It's just something that's interesting. He's a peacemaker. Yeah. Well, and and that is very true. Um, it, even though he is awkward and asks, "Can I study you?" <laughs> He's a little too frank with the with his. I told you, there. stop <laughs> phrasing it like that. Well, I don't want to lie. It's like, oh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how Demu's character has shifted over the past three hundred years. However, he survived that. Yeah, we still don't know. Well, it's one of those things. It's like, okay, we know how Galadon survived. There's all sorts of possibilities. I mean, it could just be a matter of relativistic travel. Who knows? Yeah. 
but him and Bayo, and it's like, how have you guys stuck around? Hmm. What, are you, what are you guys up to? Yeah. Also, you notice that Bayon pulled out a firearm rather than a vial of sand. It was probably hard to recharge sand. I feel like on on Roshar, it might not be as hard. It, it's, well, it definitely wouldn't be a simple process, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. There's just there's a the thing. We, well, the only thing we've seen that sand, we saw it used in Rhythm of War because they used it to detect uh, investiture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, so, well, and, and we saw Hoyd with it as well in Oathbringer. Yeah. And so it's one of those things that I, I wonder if it's an issue of it can detect it pretty well, but it might not supercharge it enough for it to be useful for uh, bending. See, I'm not, I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing we don't know. And I mean, a gun would be, is, is probably more instinct. Well, I mean, he's had enough time probably that he would have also gotten good with the sand, but it's the gun is probably just easy to just have there and not have to worry about investiture. No, there's some, there's some interesting stuff. I also love that they're just like, Oh, I have a letter for you. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. okay okay let's let's talk about this letter first off it was delivered from no no we're not at the funny part yet but okay. first off it was delivered by a woman with too many rings which immediately screams ferrochemist mm-hmm. yep terrace woman mm-hmm. but we don't uh, know who it is though do we, is there speculation on who this terrace woman is uh there was speculation seen. i saw that uh but I forget where it was and I forget the name. Okay. I, so. I feel like there was a word of Brandon saying that there was a Farukamist running around. Well, we know that we know that there's a Farukamist on, on Roshar. Yeah. But I don't and remember. We've seen, but we've seen details. a couple. We even saw one dead um, in, yes, in, Rhythm, in of War. Rhythm of War. But well, was and there was guy. also the one that was uh, allied, allied with the uh, Gavilar because she was the one talking to uh, uh, what's her bucket. Singer, she was the focal point. Of oh, Eshenai, not Eshenai. Venley. Venley, it was Venley, because she she was the one who gave her the instructions of how to get Ulam, and led her down that path. Oh. But at the same time, Gavilar said something to the effect of, "She's betrayed us. She's do, pursuing her own stuff." Mm-hmm. Mm. And so, you know, to which it's like, "Oh, look, everyone's keeping secrets, and everyone has oh. their own agenda." And everyone's betraying each other. I can't imagine. Now the the so person shocking. who the person who told them how to get Ulam though, I can't imagine them working with Hoyd. So oh, yeah, I think it would be so there's else. so there's yet another Verukamist. Um one of yeah. the, so, someone, if I remember correctly, the speculation I saw, I think it might have been on uh, the seventeenth shards video covering the same topic. Uh it was just in the comments. I think what they were guessing, it might be the uh, person that Hoyt is having do the, uh, uh, the say the words. Oh, right. Oh. That, that she might be, uh, she might not be native to Roshar. Okay. I don't, yeah, we haven't had an indication either way. I'm trying to remember I, what the name is. Yeah, I forget uh. the name as well, but that someone threw that out there. I'm like, that's an interesting theory. Senna. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'm like, oh, too many names. Can't keep track. We keep adding more. Yeah, I don't know. But no, I was just this was one of those. I saw the comment and I'm like, that's an that's an interesting theory. Uh okay. So anyway, this uh Ferrochemist that we've been talking about delivers a letter to our <laughs> people <laughs> and says you'll know who to give these to because there is a uh a picture a with very we a doodle with exaggerated proportions of each of these individuals, but they are recognizable as themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, then there's another doodle inside the letter. <laughs> it's basically was it? Did it include his name or? It's only it has it has only his signature and a crude depiction. Signature. It of was his signature, yeah, male genitalia. and a picture of male genitalia. Yeah. So, what I love, Which one I, they're I, just like after all this time. You know, I feel like he's trying to drag us back in. And then 
I also, but I also just love the comment of he's one of the oldest beings in the Cosmere, mm-hmm. and he acts like he's a teenager, and he has the mental age of a thirteen-year-old. Right. Because yep. I'm like, oh my man, I just like, I know Hoyt does silly things, but I had not anticipated him doing that. So, the thing is, it oh. wasn't particularly shocking to me. No, <laughs> I was just like, well, of course, this is what he he left them. Well, and the other thing that was interesting is the fact that uh, they refer to him as the trickster aspect. Mm-hmm. That he has an he has an entire title, in the, yeah, in their religion, which we know Hoyd has had, you know, has taken up parts in a bunch of people's religions because he's also in the 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 peaks. They have stuff well, about him. Mm-hmm. Well, and again, if you go back to uh, the um the the shattering you know if the if if that is what the one is based around he isn't one of the 16 but he's still he was present at the shattering yeah. so he would be perhaps considered a, a separate aspect or if you're if it is in fact virtuosity like you were positing hoyd would definitely have a presence in a religion around virtuosity yeah yeah he's an artist mhm different type of artist but definitely art i mean art art there's lots of different kinds of art Mm -hmm. so but i just i like basically this note is essentially a uh a written raspberry (laughs) just a (laughs) you know and it's very very hoid it's very very it's a little bit of branded too so yeah (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's also something to be said for we know Hoyd st- stores his memories in his breaths, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and so he's not as mature as he should be. Yeah, there's probably some maturity stored away. Well, I mean, if you could store memory, why not store some maturity as well? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially while you're on Roshar acting as the wit. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, and the I, other thing is the other thing is that Hoyd, you know, he clearly puts on this persona for mm-hmm. you know, one because he finds it entertaining, two because it definitely makes people underestimate him, three because again he finds it entertaining and is just amused by it, and he's been around for a while, so he and he's carrying the weight of the universe on his shoulders, so he needs something to relieve a little bit of that pressure. Yeah, and well, it's probably thing. him acting immature. It bothers people even more be- if they know how old he is. So mm-hmm. it's an extra way to get under their skin. Well, it's it's the thing of they they want him to take this seriously, and so he will not do so because that would be giving them what they want. <laughs> yep. So it's it's interesting though because they get this note from Hoyd and they think, okay, he's trying to bait us back to, to, to keep us here. And so like, so all right, fine. We're out. We're, we're leaving. And so they start heading out right at the same time as, uh, Kustakesh makes an announcement. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love the Should concept we break here. Yeah, actually probably good, good, com- good so, way to break. Coming soon. Kustakesh message. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> And we're back. So before we left, we were talking about a giant water monster. Spren thing. Kusakesh. So um, let, let's sort of talk about what we know about Kusakesh beforehand, because uh, this was mm-hmm. an Axis the Collector, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and um, on his quest to see all the Spren. To see all the mm-hmm. Spren. And this one in particular was strange because it's sort of a old faithful style thing. It always shows up at the exact same time, looking in the exact same direction. Well, it's it's, huge and it's enormous. It's this spectacle. Like it's not quite a, uh, what people refer to as like God sprints, like the, Mm -hmm. the storm father or the night watcher or the sibling, but it's still pretty big. Well, and it seems unique. There's, There's a reason people were asking that as a word of Brandon. They're like, you know, is, could you, bond to this thing and mm-hmm. Brandon has said you you know it's not you're not going to become an you know a bondsmith a bondsmith with this thing and no no one can actually bond it for reasons that aren't really clear it. right now mm-hmm. so, I, my question now is is, is it, it even, even a spread yeah and the yeah. way 
it, that we would traditionally call it a spren because mm-hmm. I don't even know if it's native to this world anymore. I, well, I know leading leading up to this, there were all sorts of theories. A lot of people thought this might be Ba Auto Mishram, like what's left of her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like, okay, why does it show up at the same time every day? Maybe it's reliving like a specific moment. Or... This is the when it was bound, or this is when it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sort of like the, the theory was out there is that it was sort of like, um, sort of like how preservation sacrificed his mind mm-hmm. in order to yeah. do stuff that maybe it was something like that, that a piece of it is missing. This is what's left over. Some people were guessing it might be di- di- diagonerous. I can never remember. The black fisherman or something? Yeah. The, it's the one of the unmade we haven't seen yet, mm. but, but a lot of people were wondering if it was an unmade and I can see why, because mm-hmm. you're yeah. trying to understand, trying to fit this into the rubric of what oh, is sure. this like that we have seen? And the answer was nothing. nothing. <laughs> totally different. Yeah. Well, and, and again, you know, cause it is something that Rosharans would call Spren, but it is not, it, it doesn't seem to be a Spren of Rosharan making or of Rosharan origin anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. No idea what it means, but it. The thing that's interesting is that it opens honors perpendicularity, which, mm-hmm. as far as I I remember, is within the high storm. Well, mother says it's honors gateway. Who knows if Fair she's it's actually honors? It's yeah, because mm-hmm. didn't the three um, got on Bayon and yeah, Demu they, says this isn't it's behaving just weird. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is actually weird for perpendicularity. Well, well yeah, but, they, but, but but to be fair, honor's perpendicularity is weird because it moves, it travels. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And this one is not just in the one city, it is in all these different cities. Right. All the different. eerie cities. cities. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, in, yeah. But they they're packing up and they're going on a basically a pilgrimage. Mm-hmm. They're going on an adventure. On an adventure. Well, what what's interesting here? One, I ju- I do like that as they're like in a rush, you know, she looks out and and they're just like, you know, Demu complaining about the odd behavior for per- perpendicularity of this nature, as if you know, as if the eerie, you know, pack up and leave uh-huh. all the time. He, it, it feels so. Mm-hmm perfunctory to him it's like guys this is a big deal it's the well, fifth journey this is the fifth time that they've ever done this mm-hmm. which that seems like a pretty big big deal yeah, like yes so it's did. a it's a migrant people but they've only done this four times before so yeah and we don't know how many generations it's been since they've done mm-hmm. that yeah well and like the whole thing, time, the traveler packs, all good Iriali kept them, of course, in case they needed to leave. But that was mostly a formality unless it was time, mm. which I mean, think about you have this religion that has been passed yeah. down from generation to generation mm-hmm. and you keep these things and it is symbolic because your grandparents never used it. Their grandparents never used it. Mm-hmm. So it's the symbolic thing. And then you find out you're oh. the generation. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And how scary that would be. Well, like you've oh, been, yeah. pre- you've been preparing for this. You, again, you've been doing this what long enough to the point where it's just sort of a, Oh, that's just that weird thing that we do, whatever. Mm-hmm. And suddenly it's like, Oh, Oh, we're doing it. We're actually using now. it. Yeah. You know, it's like if, if you've, you know, you've got a 24 hour pack that you've been just set aside and then suddenly it's just like, Oh, it's go time. Oh, Oh, did Bill freeze? I wasn't uh, doing this for no reason. There's actually a reason, and uh-huh. it's happening now. <laughs> Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, uh, but that basically happens from time to time. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Uh, so, what were we talking about before? So, I I went on about how like um the girl was I can't remember Dial was complaining to herself and kind of mm-hmm. bemoaning the fact that, you know, she was living in crazy eventful times and she wished it was peaceful. And I compared it to how people are for 2024. I saw a lot of um, things being like, may I live in a very uneventful year. That's all I want. It's just <laughs> non-eventful. 
Well, it's like in Lord of the Rings where uh, Frodo's like, I think it's Lord of the Rings where Frodo's like, I, you know, wish that it had happened. These things had not come to me. Yeah. He's like, basically, we take the times that we live in and we make of it what we can. Yeah. So I just, I just like that little bit there with the girl. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you. It's, I mean, it seems exciting for somebody else to have the adventure, but when you have to do it, it's a lot. Uh Uh-huh. One well, taking it again back to Tolkien in The Hobbit. Every time you know Bilbo stops and he's like, "Oh, I wish that I, you know, I I, I don't like this adventure." But he, you know, he goes on the adventure. But, he keeps going, yeah. but there are so many times where he misses his home and he's just like, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do it's this." Hard, yeah. But then afterwards, he's just like, "Hey, look what I did. Look at it. That's <laughs> awesome." Mm-hmm. No, yeah. it's a great quote. No, the the other thing that just like this last little bit is really intense as far not intense like action, but just emotionally, because you mm-hmm. Brandon does a great job here of really putting you in DL's uh, in, into her shoes. Yeah. And letting you feel what she's feeling. I love the bit with uh, her mother crying with uh, Uma I and know. it's like we will we will try. We'll see how far you can go. Mm-hmm. And just this whole thing, like they're going to have to sever their bond. Well, well, and I like just the, uh, you know, at the beginning though, when Kusa, you know, when they start recognizing something weird is going on, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, first Dial it appears is, at not the right time. Well, well, and that's the thing. Dial's thinking, okay, you know, this appears all the time. Why are people freaking out? And the mom says, it's the wrong time of day. Mm-hmm. And then people, Kusakesh spoke. That Sprin like, never spoke. And it's just like, okay, something is different. This mm-hmm. thing has been doing the exact same thing at the exact same time every day for as far back as memory goes. Yeah. And and this is a people with a really strong oral tradition. So mm-hmm. that's quite mm-hmm. a long memory. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just, that, you know, this is happening and they realize okay big things are going down but then like you were saying with uma let's go let's go back to that because yeah well it's, so it's the but it wasn't to be as she met back with her mother uma had returned mother was crying we will try mother whispered to the spren who brightened the floor of the rooftop mm-hmm. we will see how far you can go yeah because we know that spren can't leave roshar Mm-hmm. Um, we, we know of at least one big exception that eventually happens. We don't know when, we don't know but how. We don't, yeah, we don't have the details on that. Mm-hmm. But well, so, so, but the other thing that's interesting about this is we know the time period that this book is taking place. It is taking place right before. The, and so I'm thinking this is probably going to be before the clash between uh, the the what is it? Not the clash the challenge. Of champions. Or the yeah, the, ch- the contest the com- champ contest. Yeah. Con- yeah, and so it's uh, these things. They're getting the heck out of dodge before uh, yeah. whatever is about to go down goes down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is a part of me I don't know if this plays in like because it would have to be that because I think there have been a few times where like interludes show up and they're not necessarily perfectly in order, like in the exact correct time frame. But uh, there's a part of me that wonders maybe this is going on as uh, Rissen picks up the Dawn Shard. Why would that be? I don't know. Just something somebody in chat mentioned a little earlier that is there was a talk about people suspect one of the other theories people have put forward is that either the Iriali are tied to a Dawn Shard or maybe even Kusakesh is, is a, a Dawn, Dawn Shard. Shard. Yeah. I don't know that that would necessarily be the case because I don't think that there would be two Dawn Shards on Roshar. For, but... me, the, for me, the bigger thing would be the Dawn Shards, they try and hide them very well, and Kusakesh mm-hmm. is just so He's right there. visible. Yeah. yeah. Compared to the other Dawn Shard. But it's also, it could be one of those hidden in plain sight. Yeah, I mean that's the, this the strategy they're now going with Rissen. Um, mm. Yeah, you just make it someone so unassuming mm-hmm. that, that no one would ever think to it, yeah. look. Because why would you hand it to someone who's lame? 
But like the, the the reason that just came to mind is because this is such a monumental event, and I could see something similar coinciding. I I don't again. That's just sort of a off the top of my head speculation. I don't know that it is, but like you said, it could just be a matter of okay, you things know, are things are going yeah. down. It's time to get out of dodge. Mm-hmm. And I mean, no, well, book five is only going to be like ten days or something. So that's yeah. I don't know what we know about that. Like I mean, well, that's that's what the there's a part of me that wonders if Bran is just going to pull a whole like the in the like third chapter the contest of champions happens and everything else is the aftermath of it. Yeah. Well, it, I I have entertained that possibility that the contest of champions isn't the climax of the book. Right. But I'm I'm still holding on to I really I, guess, I wish I could remember who proposed it, but just the idea that it's going to end in a loss, but is the last bit of spite Dalinar does Bondsmith stuff to to bond honor to Odium and and do to and Odium what war. it ne- yeah to create war to do whatever the thing that Odium did not want hmm. to, to be to tempered paint, by to taint. yeah to be tempered by another v- virtue yeah I don't I don't know either that or cultivation reaches out. Well, heck, some some people are uh, some people are throwing out that cultivation might do the same thing, and that it's going to be all three of them mm. are put into one cultivated mm. war. Mm. <laughs> people, uh, the people call it progress was one that we're throwing out there because war is where does, a lot of things yeah. get created because there's all that push. Yeah, mm. it's a it's an anvil that. Uh, Mm-hmm. that forges yeah, I people i'm i just know my my ideas that i have for number five are just i don't even know if they're have any backing because i don't know for those of you who are newer before all the cosmic books we've done something called the title belt where <laughs> any everyone gets to put forward uh predictions and this is going to be our biggest one yet so start uh start your predictions yeah, start building him up because come December. Oh. Yeah, big doobs. <sighs> yeah. No, th- like this. W- I love this entire interlude. Like it is. It's one of these things. It starts off a bit like it's very oh interesting. I like these characters, uh-huh. you know, interacting, mm-hmm. and but it ends with such an emotional like just. Mm-hmm. tinge that of bittersweetness yeah. mm-hmm. well, the other thing that's really interesting about this to me especially with it happening on roshar because roshar is clearly where brandon has worked the most with like international politics and interactions and like them noticing this is an entire culture that just disappears yeah D- how no, is the not world ju- going to respond to that yeah not just a culture because it's also you know this is a fairly developed world with a fairly interconnected commerce set. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here's my other thing. We know that there's uh there's fused there. Mm-hmm. What, what are the fuse well, doing during this? Like all of a sudden everyone starts getting in boats and I'm sure they're just like, what the crap is going well, on? Not only that, doesn't uh, Ishar's faction have some sort of presence in the yeah. Iriali area? I think he claims them, but I, okay. I'm fairly certain that the, I'm fairly certain I they were very early anything. on claimed by the fuse. Or was it just the just the rear ends that were claimed? Yeah, oh, he claims a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's scary. Well, the other thing, the Iriali take off. Do the rear ends go with them? What you know, because like they're sort of connected, but they're not fully connected, and you know, because that's where uh, Evie came from. Yeah, mm. I don't know. But I love the like just this final line, like Dial clutched her pack to her chest, stunned by how fast it had happened, stunned to realize that her time in the city with the shop was over, and so she whispered a quiet farewell. It was time to leave Roshar, forever. Mm. Like the finality of that is just, just mm-hmm. like, wow. Okay, I'm in her shoes. This is rough. I, I still mean- remember. 
Like, and, 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 and here we are going, this is going to be the last Stormlight book for a while. And then mm-hmm. we get that line and it's just mm, extra oof. I still remember the look on Brandon's face when he read that line because it was just the most smug. He just said forever. And then he just sort of looks up and I was just like, oh, Brandon. <laughs> well, he it's one of those things. He knows this is well written. It's and he, how can he not be proud of that? Because mm-hmm. it's so well written, and I think it's one of those things where I'm, I'm always drawn to one of my favorite Bruce Lee quotes, where someone asked about you know you know trying to be humble or whatever, and where he said, "Well, if I you know if I if I say I'm good, people say I'm boasting. It's like, but if I'm tell you I'm no good, then you know I'm lying." And th- I think this is one of those moments where Brandon. He's really proud of it and he's mm-hmm. getting to show it, you know, to people for the first time. And you can tell he's mm-hmm. really glad he got well, to show it. Especially because he's in front of a giant auditorium of people who were there literally to Invested. celebrate him. Mm-hmm. And like, I, this was the first one that I sat in because like the other two times I stayed in the vendor hall and was doing stuff or whatever. So like, mm. I didn't ever listen to these in person before this. So a very different experience being there versus mm-hmm. just watching it well and then on so uh this graphic talks about in our chat is this is now a free space for singer listener nation yeah i don't think they'll be satisfied with that they, they want, want everything. everything well but it's also but uh the thing is even if it's a free space for them and there's a lot of ready-made stuff you can't just up and replace a population because you don't have the expert, like the the singers don't have the expertise of living in these these areas, harvesting those things. Uh, this is what something that led to a lot of uh, famines in the past, where mm-hmm. they've up and moved people, and suddenly the people who tilled that land are gone, mm-hmm. and the people who come in, maybe they farmed something, but it's not the same. It's very different land, and you mm-hmm. just lost generational knowledge right. of how everything yeah. worked. And they won't know this, what areas flood. They won't know what areas have this, you know, all these different qualities about the place yeah. that is only going to be within the colloquial knowledge. And so even if it's a, hey, we now have a convenient place, you know, for everyone to be, and, you know, can we be cool? Mm-hmm. It's not going to be that easy. And it's, and it's all over, and the different um, singers and stuff tend to want to be the kind of act the same as the nationality of the place they were in. Right. So it's even more different that way that they probably were like, well, this is where I I've lived always. So I want to be here versus mm-hmm. this is go home. over to that random country yeah. over there. So yeah, that'll, that'll know, be integration is just going to be hard if they're able to do it. Well, and again, I don't, I don't know that that's even mm-hmm. going to be an issue who, because who yeah. knows who fills that spot again, yeah. Ishar claims that area. Mm-hmm. So. Um. Yeah. But Ishar is crazier than an entire <laughs> barrel of monkeys. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm looking forward to this book. Well, and then and mm-hmm. then six years of famine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I actually, I don't think it's the fam is going to be as bad. I think we're, we're going to have so much to speculate and pick apart. And well, I just think there's going to be, be more too. books. There is going to be stuff. It's not necessarily going to be Nothing. mainline stuff, but Bra- I mean, Brandon writes. It's what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I, I feel like we're almost guaranteed for some book out of nowhere that is just going to be like, and here's. <laughs> Your story on a completely different world with a completely different magic system that I can't make a whole series about, but I want to do this one thing. So this one mm-hmm. little one shot, yeah. And then it becomes a trilogy <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> Here's your Talking Bananas trilogy. Oh, sheesh. Yeah. Uh, no, Sentient Bananas, you mean. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see him. I, I, I want to see a, a Kusakesh po- cosplay at the next Dragon Steel. Oof, that's going to be hard to walk around. <laughs> it's so wide. People were cosplaying as Reinhardt when we went to BlizzCon. Ooh, that's a big one. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. 
people had entire rigs going on. I want to see somebody cosplaying as the Night Watcher. I want somebody as <laughs> with all that. with all the hands working. Exactly. Oh man! Fully, arti- fully articulated face. limbs. Fully articulated uh, hand head limbs. So, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, this this was just a heck of an interlude. Yeah. I'm looking forward to more. Okay. More? More. Well, to our listeners, we love hearing from you, so keep on sending in your questions. You can ask us about the Cosmere, and we would love it if you drop us your ideas for topics you'd like us to discuss during the show. While you're at it, we'd love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories that you might have about what the heck is going on in the Cosmere, because right now, there's a lot to speculate on. You can send all questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to cosmerestudies at gmail.com, and hopefully we could read that as part of the show. You can also reach us at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah 84097. We do have our own personal projects outside of the podcast, so Amy, why don't you lead us off and let us know what you are up to lately. So my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. My TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay. And my website is no longer super terrible. It's not super. It's not amazing, but it's not super terrible. So I'm like so proud of myself. Um, It's www.coincidencecosplay.com. Please don't like rush there or anything and take it down. But it's. But it's it's not I'm not ashamed of it anymore, so it's great. And I'm slowly adding like single pages for each cosplay in for my cosplay directory, so you'll be able to click on the picture of that cosplay and then see a thing about it. So cool. Slowly but surely, it's gonna look not terrible, and have stuff, and I'll do more more tutorials. Um, but my big thing right now is that I am going to I mentioned it last time, and it's actually in West Valley City, the Valley Fair Mall. They're doing it's called Janu-Arty. A-R-T-Y. Um, and it's they're going to be showing the Prince of Egypt. You can do it. It's it's a charity thing for Primary Children's Hospital, I believe. And I'm going to have my booth there. I'll be selling dice as well as vinyl stickers for your car as well as maybe water bottle size. And dragon eggs, like the ones kind of from Game of Thrones with thumbtacks and stuff. So hmm. you can come say hi to me. I won't be wearing a cosplay, though. But yeah, I'll awesome. be there. So, yeah. so they'll actually recognize you. Yes, yes. And it's from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. I don't know that I'm going to stay the whole time, depending on how much I sell. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, Jordan, how about you? Uh, yeah, you can always find me on YouTube, Twitch, or Kick under the name Splice Stream, rhymes with ice cream. And most importantly, uh, I've actually started playing Fire Emblem which is uh, making good on a pro- promise. And I have to say, I have been quite pleasantly surprised with uh, there were a lot of things I did not know about it that uh, had a lot more depth to it than I had been led to believe. So, and uh, so much depth and my, well, I'll be real. My chat led me astray. They said, no, nah, you should be able to play hard. No problem with your XCOM experience. <laughs> and I'm just like, guys, there's a lot more mechanics here than, uh, then you led me to believe. And so we're actually starting back over uh, this week. Coming you, did, in. you did hard classic. Yeah. Well, and yeah. So. And so, but we're going to be starting back over on normal. And so, yeah, come by on Saturday. We'll be doing that. I look forward to joining you. If you're a fan of Fire Emblem, I am enjoying learning Fire Emblem Awakening. Cool, cool. Um, and then I have another podcast with my friend Dylan. We chat about board games. Um, the show is called The Innkeeper's Table, and we have new episodes every other Friday. Uh, it's basically the alternating weeks w- with uh, Cosmere Studies. So um, our most recent episode, though, was a top three list where we did our top three deck building slash dice building slash pool building games where you're gathering resources and making and building an engine behind all the stuff making your engine better and stuff really really fun so definitely go check that out um for those of you who want to support the sandersonian institute of cosmere studies but you can't become a patron we'd love it if you would let your friends know about the show just spread the word and help help us you know build our audience and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. We'd love it if you'd leave a comment on the YouTube videos as well. And if you want to toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, we would love that. 
Also, you can go over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies and buy our merch. We would love that. Okay, folks, final thoughts. I wasn't expected to be as invested in this uh, random teenager story as he her got me. In. Yeah. yeah. Her mom's hardcore. I like her mom. Well, I, I remember when I heard that it was an interlude that he was going to read, I actually was mildly disappointed because the first thing that he read at, at Dragonsteel last year was a scene, was a, it was a Zeth flashback. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, so I'm just sitting here thinking, look, I was like, if it's an interlude, we're not going to get anything meaty. And oh boy, was I wrong. Mm-hmm. So I am definitely looking forward to more. <laughs> this is going to be a good book. And it's written, so it now is just going through the editing process. So, ah, uh, but yeah, okay. Well, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on youtubecom slash studies every two weeks on Monday nights at seven thirty p.m. Pacific time, ten thirty p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For our next episode in two weeks, we are actually, we really, really promise this time, going to have our discussion of Hoyt's story of mission. So make sure to join us for the discussion when we stream it live in two weeks on Monday, January 29th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time at 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's There's always always another another secret. secret.